What's going on everyone, a Shrewsbury here, and I have a very interesting tutorial for you guys. This tutorial will be all about raycasting in Overwatch Workshop. So raycasting is a new function that Overwatch added to the workshop on PTR about a week after they added the workshop itself. And this function allows you to get the position of something you're looking at with your crosshair. This is super helpful and will help out with a lot of different scripts. Today, I'll be going through three examples of how you can apply this to your scripts. The first example is how to have a button that once you press it, it gets the position of something that you're looking at with your crosshair and returns the distance in a big message above the screen here um, of how far away that thing is. The second example I'll go through is how to paint onto surfaces using that position that you returned. And the last example, if you're willing to stick it out, and I'll show the code so you know how to make this yourself, is how to make a portal gun inside of Overwatch. So if you're interested in learning all about raycasting and how to implement it yourself, stick around. Okay, so before we launch straight into the code, I wanted to explain in greater detail what a raycast is so that when we start programming it, programming it, we know what's going on and we can start to fix errors if they arise. So a raycast is kind of like a laser. Think about that as an analogy. There is no physical laser that we see, but there's an imaginary line that will be drawn. In our case, we will draw an imaginary line from our position out towards infinity or a position very far away from us and that position will be based on our rotation so we'll pick say a point that's a thousand meters away from us but in the direction of the direction that we are facing now where it becomes useful is if that laser if that line were to be obstructed by something that could be a player or an object we would know because it would be cut off um, and we can return the position at which the line was obstructed. And that's how we get our position of, say, a wall that we're pointing at. Imagine there's a line that's trying to go out towards infinity, but it can't because it first hit a object or a player. So um, that's how the logic works. Let's jump into the code and see how we can start to implement this and use it for our own scripts. Okay, so here we are in my code blocks. Now, this is where we're gonna start implementing that Raycast functionality for our scripts. The first ab ability, our crouch ability, is probably the most simple and straightforward. So let's take a closer look at that. All we're doing here is when we hit the crouch button, we wanna display a big message that is the distance between us and that thing that is obstructing our raycast line. So if we open this up, it's just a big message to everyone with a string, and in that string parameter, we have the distance between ourselves and our raycast hit position. This is the block that you're gonna wanna use. But if we take a closer look um, at only the things that are part of this raycast hit position, we first need a start position and an end position. Our start position is obviously going to be us. That's the one end of the line. Now the end position gets a little bit complicated, but I want to explain why I chose these parameters. So our end position has something to do with us, but it also is has something to do with the direction that we're facing. We need to start with a value that is our position and then add more to it um, to get a relative position to us. So we're gonna start with an add block and split that into two values. One is our position itself, and the other one is a multiply block. Now, um, I know we're branching a lot, but think about it as our position plus something else. And this something else will be um, the direction that we are facing times 1,000 exactly. That's the number that I found to work the best. So basically this is saying one point of the line will be us, the other point will be us, but take the direction that we're facing and extend that in that line for a thousand meters and now we got our two points, our line in the direction that we are facing. Now all we have to do is use that to um, send back the distance between 
us and that point. So that is the first script. Now getting the distance between ourselves and the thing that we're looking at can be good sometimes. However, oftentimes we just need to do something at the position, say create an effect at the position that we're looking at, which is slightly different. So that's when the second example comes into play, this painting script. Now this goes over um, Raycast hit position, but also a few tips on how to actually do this kind of stationary effect type thing. So let's jump into the code and I'll show you how I did it. Now, um, it's important to keep in mind that I disabled all the normal abilities for all the characters in the normal game of Overwatch so that I can replace it with my own. So you might want to consider doing that. Otherwise, you would also be firing and using other abilities while you did this. But I just have one simple script for um, the paint primary. So this is activated when I'm hitting primary fire and it will create an effect at the location of the Raycast hit position. This is the same script and parameters that I used for the getting distance function. However, we will be creating a orb, a blue orb, and the size is 0.25, a lot smaller than normal. And there are a few things you want to keep track of when you're doing a specifically painting script. One is you want to make sure you check reevaluation to none. Otherwise, whenever you create a new effect, or whenever your crosshair moves, for that matter, you will continue to update the position of that effect to move to your new Raycast hit position, and all your effects will clump into one position and follow your crosshair around. If you wanted to keep it and have it in a stationary position, you hit none so it does not update. The other thing is that there is a maximum number of effects you can add to the game at one time. I think it's set at around 64. So after we have 64 things on the field, we can't add any more. So you want to make sure on your script, you don't create them too fast. Otherwise you run out of them pretty quickly. So this uses a looping function that if you're still hitting primary fire, continue to create an effect, but you need a wait condition anytime you have a loop. Now it's up to you to de decide how long you want to wait. Having a shorter wait time will make them appear faster and it'll be a smoother line, but you might run out of effects. Having a longer wait time will make them more spaced out, but you can make more paints as you go along. So it's up to you what you want to do. But that is the painting script. Next up is the portal script. script. So let's get into that. Okay, so the last example is our portal teleportation script. Now this takes a few different code blocks but you can see that um, we are using our Raycast hit to place them. But there are a few other things that you have to consider when um, making these, because there are some a few more functionalities like the teleporting and the position and proximity and things like that. So let's jump into the code. Now there are a lot of blocks, but a lot of them are duplicated. So um, it should be pretty simple. The first thing that I would like to consider is this script here is for destroying the effects from the painting script. So um, this will come into play later because technically the portals are effects, so we need to work around that. Um, the first real scripts are getting setting up the actual portal mechanics. So we have the blue portal and the red portal set on shift and E. So when I hit ability one, which is your shift key, we want to set a player variable that will hold the position of the portal and we'll say player variable a will include that position so we do that same thing we say uh, raycast hit position and we store that variable into a same thing for the red portal we'll store that into b so now we have the positions but we still haven't created the effect so we need to render the portals this is basically, um, this script is to avoid them being wiped whenever we hit Q. We have when the ultimate button is hit, then wait a quarter of a second and then render these portals. Now these are using auto updating reevaluation things. So if we were to change the positions, we don't have to re-render the portal. We, it'll just update itself. So all we have to do is create an effect and this will be a ring with a radius of one at the position of that player variable A or the player variable B if you are um, 
using the other portal here. Now, um, last thing we have, or second to last thing, is the actual teleportation script. So this is where it gets a little bit funky. So the problem that you will run into is if you have... Um, the, the, the common approach to doing this is if you get close to the portal, like within the circle, teleport to the other portal. Now the problem is, once you teleport to the other portal, you are now in that portal. And logic says, okay, let's teleport you to the original portal. And you'll bounce back and forth in between because there's nothing saying you just went in. So we need to add another variable which will be set to either true or false. This will be this will be player variable C. Player variable C is to distinguish is it the first time we're going in or did we just teleport? So if it's equal to true, then teleport us and then set it to false. So you can see if we go within um, one meter of A, teleport to the position of B, then turn off C. Same with uh, blue to red, only everything is flipped. Now, if we are further than one meter away from A and further than one meter from B, then we can reset C to true, meaning we have to step out of both portals before we can even consider teleporting once. So I will share this code for you guys, um, but I hope this was helpful you, to you guys. If you found it helpful, please leave a subscribe because I make a bunch of tutorials about the Overwatch Workshop editor. Also, if you want to see a more in-depth and more um, less buggy version of the teleport uh, portal guns, please let me know in the comments, say I want a new portal gun video, and I'll be sure to do that. Let me share that script for you, almost forgot. Uh... But until next time, thanks and have a great day.